All right. I want to welcome Christine Faria back to the show. She's now the 125 pound bare knuckle champion of the world, and I couldn't be more proud of her. So uh, you're looking good with uh, your belts there. <laughs> Does it feel good to be uh, the champ? <laughs> Great. Finally. I, I, I knew I was the greatest, or I, I was saying I was the greatest before I knew I was. <laughs> well, I think I think anyone who had seen uh, your other fights already knew that going into this. It, it, I, I doubt it surprised many people uh, the result here, but, uh, but let's get right into it. So, uh, Britton Hart was defeated for a second time. Uh, this time it was by decision instead of a medical stoppage. And I got to say, from start to finish, I sort of think this is a textbook example of how to use a jab and how to uh, maintain a good distance for a fight. So. Uh, how do you feel about how this fight went? Because we all know that you went into this with a mentality of wanting to knock her out, but what you ended up doing was uh, just technically boxing her the entire time, and uh, it worked out in your favor. But what's your thoughts on this overall? Um, I'm kind of glad that it went the five because then I got to punish her the five rounds. You know, a little little bit of payback for the the trash talk and stuff like that. Um, did I want the knockout? Yeah, of course I want the first knockout in history in bare knuckle but i'll work on that um i just i did what i had to do at the time i had to do it and as we as i had told you before there were some medical conditions um that really hindered me in the build-up although i don't show that kind of stuff you know when i'm coming up um it it, it hindered me a little bit in in my performance Okay, so did was this a power issue? Uh, this uh, medical issue, like, uh, what did this affect your power? Do you think, or um, because your speed definitely didn't seem compromised at all the entire time you were uh, getting in, getting out, moving all around the ring, and uh, like I said, maintaining a good jab. Uh, but uh, what what was the issue there? Um, I just don't. I, I I was only able to spar three times the whole camp. Oh uh, wow. Just my timing and my, you know, reaction time is really important. And I had to really make sure I didn't get re sick and just be careful with, with what was going on with my health at the time and make sure that I was preserving for the fight, watching my weight. You know, it was just it was really mentally challenging and mentally challenging. Yeah. Because it, literally the biggest fight of my life um and i don't want to uh lose a fight because of health conditions but i wasn't gonna not fight or not uh take the the opportunity right right so then where would you rank this in your fights because this definitely doesn't seem like it was uh the most challenging you know from the from the outside it doesn't look like that you made it look easy but uh do you rank this as like uh uh, in your bare knuckle career, where do you rank this? I mean, it was a fun fight. You know, I got to, you know, punch her a lot. And I didn't break my hands. I didn't get hurt. You know, um, in, in terms of difficulty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's, she's a tough girl. You know, she could take some shots and she kept coming forward. She she's a tough athlete tough fighter she just it, she's not she's not on my level and i think she needs to get go down a weight class well i was actually uh wanting to ask a question about that i'm sure everyone's been asking you where you think you should go next but i'm curious where you think she should go next because uh it, it's it, it would be interesting take to hear where uh the person who just defeated her thinks she should go like uh, do you think it would be a good idea for her, her to take a little bit of a break from bare knuckle? Or do you think uh, that uh, there's other fighters that uh, she could go after? And does she just need to focus on a weight, another weight division, you think? I think, you know, she's doing great. I mean, she's on a four fight. Win. I think the other girls for her will be competitive. I think 115 is better for her. I mean, people aren't coming in at their fight weight. Right. So that it makes no sense. And her, her management team and her coaching coaches and her, her supposed, supposed to be smart man should know that, you know, so they're not really taking care of her in that way. She's not in the right way. Class. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I see that with a lot of fighters and I think that, uh, it's a, it's a good point that you've made there, uh, on, on an observation of where she's at. Cause, uh, I, I couldn't agree more after seeing that. It, it just seemed like it was a bit of a, uh, uh, maybe you could say a very one-sided fight because, uh, I, I didn't get to see the judges' scorecards there, but I imagine they gave uh, uh, every round to you. <laughs> so uh, it, it didn't seem like uh, uh, she was where she should have been. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm still interested to see her fight, but it, it was good to see uh, the rightful champ, the, the rightful queen of the 125 division uh, get what she deserved. <laughs> they gave her two rounds. Yeah. Oh, they did give her two rounds. That's that was quite generous. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Hey, I was scared I wasn't gonna get the get the, the decision at all. Yeah. I really they get scared. You know, sometimes they give those decisions are insane. Yeah, we've seen it happen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you also I don't know how you feel about Chris Young usually, but he, uh, <laughs> my co-host and I we don't normally have a very positive opinion of uh, that ref, but uh, we do think that he did a really good job and a very fair job at this fight. I liked him a lot. He didn't, yeah. bug, he didn't bother me. He didn't, uh, he wasn't, um, he wasn't favoring anybody. He yeah, was, he really wasn't, which, which I, I think is a change from some of his past decisions. So uh, it's good to see that uh, some of the refs might be growing as well because it seemed like it was a totally fair and unbiased uh, refing job, and I didn't see any uh, suspicious things like I've seen in the past. So I was very, very happy with the fight results. Um, so I wanted to go back maybe a little bit in your life, and one, and I was wondering, uh, what do you think 20-year-old Christine would say if she could see you now? Like, w w where do you think, like, where you were in your headspace back then would think about where you are today you come up with the greatest questions bro <laughs> thank you um 20 year old me huh yeah 20 year old you specifically it's seeing me now yeah 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 like seeing where you are now seeing that belt like right in front of you like seeing you uh in front of the world like the way you are like would it be a totally unbelievable or do you think you actually kind of had a mindset like I'm gonna be something great, and you could like be like, oh yeah, that that that's a that's a pretty realistic future for me. Or do you think back then you had no like ambition like this? I had ambition. <laughs> I've yeah. always had whatever I do, but I wouldn't believe that I would make it to this point. I, my goals were that, and I did have visions of certain things, but. For it to actually come to this, no, okay. uh, it would be like, wow, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. What were you? Where? What were you doing back at that time? Uh, out of curiosity, when you were twenty years old, what did? Were you just? Uh, were you even into combat sports back then, or uh, were you just sort of stuck in a headspace of like I'm in a job that's like a dead end thing, or, or where were you back then, and, and and how far have you come from that point? always been a combat I've been in combat sports my whole entire life so whether it was legal or not is, is not is the question right so right. yeah I was I was fighting back then I was doing my thing but you know um just in a different realm different environment you know okay. like my pre-training yeah yeah for sure for sure well, uh, in your time since you won the championship belt, have you felt like uh, you became like more famous or does it feel about the same, honestly? Because some people say, you know, once they get that goal they've been working for and working for, they don't really feel, you know, that different. But are you noticing like a, a change in like when you meet new people or or more attention or is it really about the same? Oh, definitely not the same. Um, I feel like. So for me, I'm never satisfied with my with anything do better, 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 still not satisfied, but I know I have more, more of a confidence in, I guess, maybe the competition world that I was actually given the chance and the opportunity to do this. I didn't think that they would allow me that or give me that opportunity. 
um, now I can feel the the hard work that I did kind of pay off. Yeah. Never felt that. Okay. You know, for no reason and I'm just working hard and it's for nothing. It felt like, you know, um, but yeah, a lot more attention. I'm getting a lot more, I'm, I'm being invited everywhere. You know, do you think it's, do you think it's a bare knuckle thing? Like how does bare knuckle compared to the other combat sports you did in the past when, uh, when you would win or lose and, and, uh, is it, is it specifically a bare knuckle thing? Do you think? I think, no, I think I got better. Okay. I just got better honestly I I think that I would I've been held back a lot you know because of my what I look like and my image and I'm not that pretty girl yeah um, beautiful but you know what I mean I'm not the feminine girl right uh, so I think that me getting much better at what I do kind of made me undeniable yeah for my because they they gotta they gotta they gotta love you for your skill they, you know that Maybe you aren't so, like you said, maybe you aren't so marketable as like the sexy girl that they want to put on all the posters and stuff, but they can market you as a scary girl. I think they need to try that more. <laughs> Definitely going to be the angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you're, you're scary, but also super likable. And I, I, I was really enjoying, I'm sure you've probably seen the uh, uh, fight footage several times by now, but I was really enjoying the way they were saying like, these are two of the most likable people in their division, like uh, the uh, the announcers. And I was like, yeah, yeah, they are. They are pretty likable. <laughs> so it's, it's nice that other people are recognizing that, too. And, you know, they there's there's uh, there's you in the ring and then there's you outside the ring. And uh, they're not different people, but, uh, you know, maybe maybe they can come across as different. <laughs> but it's a good thing, too. My polar gets in the way sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I was, I'm kind of curious uh, if, if you just had to like pick one product that uh, maybe your sponsors like provided or that uh, your sponsors were, you know, behind, what do you think was your favorite uh, product that a sponsor uh, had provided you with in this last fight? If you just had to pick one. Fighter's friend, CBD, because my back gets tight, uh -huh. you know. So the fighter's friend CBD oil, I mean, a C CBD cream really yeah. helped me out. Okay. So that like relaxed you and, uh, helped with, uh, some, uh, back pain issues you think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And do you, uh, do you use that during uh, massages you get and stuff to loosen up your muscles? Yeah, I do actually have the massage therapist use it during my, my, my massages. Okay. Um, I, I was also wanting to know who was that guy that was your, uh, uh, who was giving you all that advice in your corner, uh, at, right before the fifth round where he was just telling you to finish the fight. You know, uh, if you win this round, you win the fight. Like, uh, who was that guy? Look at me. Can you give me this round right now? Give me this round. Win the fucking fight right now. Hey, you win this round, you win this fight. Win the fucking round right now. Win the fucking fight. At the end of the day, fucking win the fight. I believe in you because he was super inspirational right that's aj easily he he uh is a trainer out of hill street boxing in long beach california i've known him for he actually helped me from the beginning of my bare knuckle career we've been work, working together on and off for about four years super inspirational very supportive uh good guy um very dedicated coach you know and he's very passionate and that's why I picked him for this camp because, um, you know, my sickness kind of like took a lot of that out of me and I needed that surrounding me. And he really brought me back to life. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like it from the outside, I, I could definitely see that uh, he, he pushed you to keep going in that last round. You looked exhausted as you well should be from uh, hitting her in the face so many times, but uh yeah it's uh it, when i saw that i was like oh yeah he's gonna he's gonna push her to be her, the best who she can be so uh he was a really cool guy and I, I think he was notable in that fight you know they did a good job uh getting a mic close to him so we could all hear that yeah he brought it out of me when i went back when I went back in the fifth round i was just like you need to go you yeah. need to go you know so he, he, he it was great 
his motivation before I went into that round was perfect. I'm also curious now that uh, Triller has acquired BKFC, have you uh, noticed any changes? Were there any changes in like your contract or uh, any anything like that uh, that's uh, already been made or is that coming later? I'm sure that'll come in two more fights. Okay. I I've, all, I've, all, all I've seen is that, uh, you know, Triller, you know, bought BKFC. So uh, I haven't seen any more details about what changes are actually coming, but uh, I, w- I was curious if, if you've seen any effect from that yet. No, nothing no, yet. Nothing really. I also saw all those uh, awesome pictures of you and your manager at the shooting range. And now I'm just wondering when we're going to get to see some uh, custom Misfit AR-15 rifle designs. <laughs> yeah, I got a custom. <laughs> um nine millimeter oh you got a custom nine millimeter yeah it's it's gonna have um i believe my name on it or my signature customized okay. yeah. and it's gonna be engraved it'll have like my yeah engraved and like my 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 team misfit i think emblem and stuff like that so oh, they're, that's they're awesome addition. I, I want one of those <laughs> so I say again we're going to release a series. Okay. Yeah, so people will be able to purchase those. Okay, that's really cool. I'm excited yeah. to see that. I, I might have to get me one of them. Well, so where can we get all your merch and stuff? Because I've seen some cups and stuff up. Uh, I've seen it advertised, but I've not, I, I was trying to find the link and I couldn't even find it. So where's the place where people can go out and get your merch? I am going to be setting that up. Um, I'm going to stop start organizing that a little bit better. I had some people that I was working with but I'm kind of switching over. I'm in the middle of switching over. That's why this last camp didn't have um, much merch. Like every fight I do, I just, it, it's been, it was a crazy camp and the medical condition really got me. And um, this next this next fight and things coming up, I'm going to have more of a um, organized uh, place to get my stuff. Okay, okay. And uh I don't suppose you're allowed to tell us who you think it is that's uh, going to be matched up with you, or, or do you already know, or uh, you don't know yet? <laughs> it's too early to say, right? Yeah, I'm waiting, and I think that, I don't know. I mean, Taylor's Taylor's the next in line, but I don't think they're going to give me her. You don't? I, I, I mean, I, I, who else would they give you? I mean, I, I mean, I was looking at the roster, and I was sort of thinking to myself, man, None of these people, I don't think, really have a great shot at beating you. But who's going to, like, sell the most tickets? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense for them to put Paige Van Zandt against you. You you just, it, you could probably get her in one or two rounds. So, I mean, maybe for a money fight. But uh, even then, you know, it's it, it doesn't seem right to put her against you. You know, maybe Rachel Ostovich, but is she even still with uh, Bare Knuckle or... I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, there's been no news about her really. So Taylor Starling, I guess, makes sense, but is uh, is she ready for you? I don't, I don't know. I mean, she's done really good against the people she's been put up against, but you're on another level. So I don't know if, uh, I don't know if that's the fight to make or not. I mean, I would be excited to see it regardless, but uh, still, is do they want to, uh, do they want to cut her win streak off so soon, or do they want to build her up a little more? That's the question to ask, I guess. I'm I'm just here waiting to fight anybody. <laughs> yeah. anyway, what I, uh I, what, what do you think about some of the newer uh, girls that have come in? Like uh you got any uh favorites just from watching them that uh you know anyone that stood out? Like what do you think about that um girl from uh, I believe she's from Poland uh uh something Kroll? Did you see yeah. her? Cuz she she's been uh, making a little bit of uh news in the bare knuckle community. People are excited to see where she's going to go after her uh after her last fight did uh did you get to see that yeah yeah i i i'm familiar with her uh she she's long very tall very skinny um you know i she's gonna have more than a jab with me though yeah she does i mean i i know how to work i know how to you know put that jab away so, yeah, I've heard people saying that they're going to uh, put you against her. I'm like, I, I don't think so. Not yet. They're probably going to throw her through a, a few more people in the meat grinder before they, they get to put her against you. But yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see wherever your career goes. Uh, you know, you're just going to keep on keep on destroying people until you retire. 
Uh, but uh, getting back to something you have said uh, a few times in the lead up to this fight or this last fight and said it on uh, our last interview, uh, you were talking about with the people in your weight division, you don't want to be friends with them because you're, there's a good chance that you can uh, be put up against them in a fight. But uh, what do you think about people who are just directly below your weight division? Is, is that still kind of dangerous because people move weight divisions? Or do you feel okay doing that with some people? Because um, I've, I've seen some, uh, some of the fighters in BKFC uh, you know, really look up to you from a, a lower weight division. Uh, one of the girls from my state, uh, Jenny Savage, it seems like she's a, a huge fan of you, but still, uh, do you still think with them being one weight division, is that safe or still kind of dangerous? Well, not everybody's ratchet, bro. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So I, mean, I prefer to not get too close to people because I don't like to hurt people I love or like. I'm never going to fight Jenny Savage ever in my life. Okay. So, you know, I'll, I mean, me and her would never agree to fight. I don't care what happened. Oh, really? <laughs> I couldn't punch that girl. So, um, yeah, I mean, I try not to. I try not to be, I don't want to be friends with you because it's going to get sticky. It's going to get ugly because I, I, I'm a mental, I like to dominate you mentally, emotionally, and physically. That's yeah. just what I do. You know, that's the name of the game. And I'm going to take your heart and your soul by the time I'm done with you. And I don't like to do that to my friends. Yeah. So I just want to kind of bit cordial, of course, and professional, but I don't need to be your best friend. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I can see that. But yeah, it's good to, it's good to hear that about uh, you and Jenny Savage. Cause Jenny Savage is another, uh, is another fighter. I respect a lot. And I, uh, I I've always enjoyed seeing her fight. Uh, I, I would love honestly to maybe see, a rematch between her and Britton Hart at some point if uh, Jenny is going to be, uh, you know, willing to do that again. But uh, yeah, uh, it last the last fight she had with her didn't go the way that uh, I expected or the way that uh, Jenny wanted it to. But uh, what do you think that uh, Jenny could work on to uh, improve herself and maybe be ready for a rematch with Hart? Oh, we're already working on that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, she's Really? So you, you already know it's something about that. But yeah, she's, we're really close, me and Savage. So I, I men, mentor her a little bit or, you know, help her out whenever she comes to Vegas and she stays at my house and we train, okay. you know? So, uh, yeah, I love Savage. She's, she's like my little sister, you know? So I just, I want the best for her and I want her to be the best athlete and fighter. Um, I think if she fights Brenton hard again, it's going to be a different fight. For yeah, sure. I, I do too. I do too. I, she's definitely not going to, uh, uh, she's definitely not going to go into it with the same mentality. Cause she seems to change every fight. And, uh, her, her, her last fight she did went really well. And I was, I was really excited to see her come out with the W. So yeah, it, it's cool to see that, uh, two of my favorite, uh, female fighters in uh, BKFC are friends with each other. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm I'm curious, uh, what have you been doing since uh, you you won your last fight? I mean, I've seen you go to the range, and I've seen yeah. you eat good. So, uh, are you still just living it up, or are you already back to the gym, uh, hitting the bags right. and working on things? Oh, well, I'm I'm letting my my hands heal all the way. You know, I always go back too soon; they always hurt for a month or a month and a half. So, I'm letting them heal all the way. I'm just running right now, running push ups pull-ups um, oh yeah you're running from those uh, mountain lions right we i saw some footage of uh you uh running around over there in uh out west and uh you uh ran pretty fast back to the car after seeing something right i mean i know my limits and i i, I don't think i can beat up a mountain lion okay oh like, really i, I mean I, or i was kind of excited to see that news story of uh mountain lion gets attacked by misfit <laughs> yeah i'd like to carry a gun usually comes <laughs> or um i make someone follow me okay really yeah that, that's that sounds like the safe thing to do yeah those mountain lions don't fuck around 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it, it's great to see that. Do you have any kind of like uh, healing uh, treatments that you do for your hands to make them feel less sore and less uh, achy? Uh, like, do you soak them in anything? I've heard some people soak them in things. Do you do anything like that? Or you just sort of like, just don't be rough with them? The first week is I soak my body in alcohol. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, after I soak my body in alcohol for about four days, and I'm then they're not as sore and swollen. Then I do the CBD, um, CBD cream. Okay. And you know, I don't really ice. I I know I should. They want okay. me to. I hate ice. I hate being cold. So yeah. I just, you know, I'll go to the spa or um, the sauna, and I think it helps with the inflammation. Um, I do CBD, a lot of CBD, a lot of CBD, a lot. And I do like, I do edibles at night. So I think it helps close to ice them, you know, right after and stuff like that. I, everybody should after your fight, icing your hands. I just don't, I hold drinks for about four days. (laughs) Okay. Do do you do any uh, pool training? Cause I I know some fighters like to do stuff in the pool. Do you, uh, in the pool the, do, do you uh do you do a shadow boxing in the pool or is it is it like just like uh treading I, water or laps or what for my cardio and stuff oh for just my, for cardio okay yeah and it's good for your breathing the time you're breathing and stuff so okay interesting all right it's nice to get a little insight into your uh, workout routine to see how the you know the best of the best do it <laughs> but uh all right so i think we're getting to the end of this but I wanted to give you a chance to give a shout out to all your sponsors. So let everyone know uh, about all your, uh, the people that supported you in this last fight and any shout outs you want to give, you can go ahead and do it. Okay. So I want to give a shout out to DGM, the one who made my, my, uh, my whole, hit, my whole gift, my fight. Oh, knockout, knockout Canada. I'm always sporting them. DLX boxing, Hill street boxing, um, the gun company, the one who's making my gun. Shout out to them. I can't wait for that that gun. Uh, Bliss Fuel, um, good vegan protein that I use that I like with them and some aminos and stuff like that and some good weight loss stuff for them. And uh, I guess bare knuckle management. They're all right. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my managers. Yeah, and, Jules, you know, Jules Gray, your manager, is one of the best in the business, I think. He is. He um, put up with me, so I put up with me anybody else is going to be easy to deal with <laughs> yeah oh yeah um shout out to all for, thank you for having me on dude and giving me exposure i appreciate it. i love interviewing with you oh um, well, i love i love having you on you're you're really one of my favorite people i've ever had on and i've had some really awesome people on so it, you know i never get tired of talking to you to be honest <laughs> and then to the fans and to the followers the supporters the sponsors my family friends you know, I, I like to grateful. the vets for welcoming me into their you know place of where they relax you know it's a bar and and restaurant and stuff like that it's for the marines and actually all military but it's a uh, marine um mostly marines go there i think yeah but there's a lot of other branches like air force and stuff there in army and um yeah, I'm starting to get involved with like, you know, the volunteer work and stuff like that. Just everybody that's giving me the opportunity to to be able to do that. I appreciate it. That's fantastic. That's really great to hear that uh, someone in your position is able to to do stuff like that. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm grateful. Um and bare knuckle, you know, bare knuckle gave me this opportunity, David Feldman let me gave me a chance, you know, and I'm gonna represent. You know, I'm here to to spread bare knuckle around, you know, get people involved in this, liking it enjoying it loving the savageness but you know knowing that it's not as dangerous as other sports can be we get knocked out faster and we get cut faster you know it's not as much damage to the brain and that's why i like what i do yeah i like that too all right well thank you very much for being on and uh, i can't wait to get you on again because you know this is another fantastic one that uh, i'm very happy to be a part of <laughs>